This is a real haunted house. That is a sweet centerpiece that's easy to make with SoFlow Home Project host Elena Capra, Morgan has Halloween makeup tips, and Aniva shows you how being scared affects your health. These are minimalist shoes, and they might be better for you, and we'll show you why the flu shot isn't so scary. I'm Hunter Frankie, and that's all today on a very spooky edition of SoFlow Health. <laughs>
And the fact that you can do it with literally with uh, thousands of people, I think it actually elevates your mindset and makes you feel part of something bigger. And I think that has positive effects on the mind and the mental well-being of uh, the individual. It benefits both the visitors that come here as well as you guys yes. that are actually playing the roles of these uh, zombies. Yes. I think we're going to feed off of them. They're going to feed off of us. And maybe not like as vampires, but maybe in different ways. I think that energy and excitement, it builds as you lead up to Halloween Day itself. So I go to different haunted houses every year. And this is like a ritual for me. But every time I go, I realize that I start sweating, my heart starts beating faster, the adrenaline rush. Tell us the science behind that. That's a very good point. So human beings are programmed, go into a mode of fight or flight, right? So if you sense danger, you're gonna wanna fight or you're gonna wanna run. And in this case, you're gonna wanna run. I think uh, it helps us. And uh, being part of, let's say, a, a zombie land experience, really allows you to accelerate that built-in automatic programming. It's gonna be fun and exciting to kind of see the interaction of the zombies and the characters with the guests and our participants. And I definitely think it's gonna give them an adrenaline rush. And I definitely think it's gonna kick them into high gear to wanna to, want to run. What about your actors? Do they have to prepare mentally doing this every day? It does take some mental preparation and mindset really to be out there for three or four hours and be continually scaring people. So guys, like Sean said, being scared is actually both physically and mentally good for people, for both the visitors and the actors, correct? Yes, absolutely. I think it's going to be a fun experience, both for the zombies and the actors and the participants. So definitely looking forward to doing this event. I think it's going to be fun. It's unique and looking forward to you know having a blast. Okay, so being scared isn't so bad. After all, it's how we know we're alive, right? That being said, I'm going to go in for round two, but I need some help this time. Morgan? Don't worry, girl. I got you. Let's go back. <laughs> When SoFlo Health returns, more haunted hotspots, Halloween makeup tips, and CVS has everything you need to know about flu season and the flu shot. Welcome back to SoFlo Health. I'm still inside the King Cromartie House, one of the most haunted places in all of Florida, and it's right here in Fort Lauderdale. And although no one has lived here for decades now, the dining room is still set up as if Edwin and Louise were going to have dinner tonight. And some say they still have dinner together every night. And if you don't think that's spooky enough, wait till I show you what's upstairs. <laughs> hmm, I wonder what I'm gonna be for Halloween this year. If you're into Halloween at all, you know that figuring out your costume is only half the battle. Taking care of your skin while you put on that Halloween makeup is just as important, especially for these guys. Let's take a closer look at how you make these looks up. Maybe they can give me a beauty tip or two? We are here at Zombieland today. I am here with Sway, the official makeup artist for Zombieland. So Sway, tell me a little bit about this makeup as it pertains to health. So are these non-toxic makeup products we're 100%. using? 100%. Okay. Always using non-toxic makeup. What's the best way before you start caking all of this on? Definitely no grease on the face. So if it's been sweating or anything, then we definitely want to make sure to take that off. You can use wipes, like non-toxic wipes or just natural soap. If you haven't sweated, then it's okay for the skin to have its natural oils. It actually helps to you know, just kind of gather the, the paint on there. The pores really do absorb all of anything that we put on it. So we wanna make sure that we take the time to self-care afterwards and really take off any debris that is still on the face. Then is it bad to do this really often to your skin or not if you're taking care of it afterwards? So it's obviously like better for the skin to breathe and not have anything on top. However, because it is Halloween and we want to be festive, right. it's okay. It's not gonna be the end of the world. I mean, for zombies it might be. Right. <laughs> so tell me if there's a difference if someone has dry versus oily skin, how that can affect the makeup process and what kind of precautions they can take before to make it stay on. Just for starters, we should always be using some kind of moisturizer like sunscreen, whether we have dry or oily skin. If you have dry skin then it's perfectly fine because the paint won't like mix up it is. It is oily and it is hot like Miami humid right. 
Then we definitely have to wipe the face down before we put on the makeup so that way it doesn't smear immediately when we put it on. For the people at home, not only do we want to look for non-toxic products, but when it comes to Halloween makeup, not everyone's as good as you, Sway. So do you have any tips on how people could simply do makeup and look effective? YouTube is a great source of inspiration. Okay. Besides that, honestly, it's like really channeling the inner artist and like doing your best and always knowing that everything, like Bob Ross say, like it's not it's just happy little accidents. So I think I'm ready to be zombified right now. I'm looking a little too alive. So what do you say we switch it up and you turn Let's it into a scary zombie? It. So right now we're gonna give you a chic zombie look. Ooh. With zombies, you wanna keep that grungy look. With the right beauty products and a good skincare regimen, I can achieve the perfect ratio between pretty and scary. <laughs> The train's going by outside, it's extra spooky in here, and tell me that this isn't creepy. Now, one of these two dolls is internet famous for being scary, or the look in its eyes, or who knows why. They both give me the creeps, and I can't figure out which one. I also told you that we would visit three of the most haunted places in Florida. I'll see you at the next one, the New River Inn. Ugh. How are you feeling? It is cold and flu season after all, so chances are you might have a little of the sniffles or maybe you're feeling lethargic. Uh-oh, you're getting sick, so you're headed to the store to get some help, but you don't know what to get. Luckily, we're here at CVS Pharmacy, the perfect place to find out. This is Natalie, pharmacist here at CVS, and we're talking flu shots. So Natalie, who is the flu shot for? Flu shots are available for all of our patients starting at six months of age, and all of our patients can come in and get a flu shot as early as that age. And what is the benefit to the flu shot? It's preventing the flu, correct? Well, we do want to stress the importance of the prevention, and prevention not only comes in the way of washing our hands daily or seizing into our elbows, but also making sure we vaccinate everyone at home. So starting at six months of age, we want everyone to get their flu shots and make sure that we keep everyone healthy at home, especially for our babies that can get vaccinated before then. And what is the importance of getting your flu shot every year? We do have multiple strains and they change year to year. And we have people that work on that and make sure that we have the flu that is gonna be most prominent for that year. And that's what our flu shot is gonna be for our patients. So in that case, when should somebody get the flu shot? Flu season peaks around January mm -hmm. and flu season starts October 1st, but uh, flu shot became available early in August. So as right. soon as the uh, flu shot becomes available, CDC recommends for you to get your vaccination. So now is a good time. Now is a perfect time. <laughs> Great. And uh, somebody might be watching and thinking, why would I go to CVS to get my flu shot? What's well, the benefit? CVS is near 76% of the population within a five mile radius. It's very easy, very convenient. Five, 10 minutes, you're in and out and you'll be protected for the flu season. In fact, it's so convenient that our producer had his flu shot while we were here filming today. That's right. Now, there's a lot of misinformation out there about the flu shot. Uh, what are some myths that people um, might have that you could bust for us? Now, the most common myth is, I am gonna get the flu when I get the flu shot. That is not correct. Flu vaccine is inactive. Some people get soreness or redness, right. swelling on the arm where we did the vaccination, mm -hmm. but no flu from the flu vaccine. So the flu vaccine will not give you the flu? You will not get sick from the flu. <laughs> Well, the bottom line is if you're going to get your flu shot that you should come here to CVS, get it as done as quickly as possible and uh, you have an alternative in case someone can't take the regular flu shot. Isn't that correct? That's correct. We're always here Monday through Sunday and all of our minute clinics are also available for our patients six months and older. At the CVS locations, we do for patients 18 months and older. Well, great. No appointment necessary. No appointment necessary. No appointment. Well, thank you very much, Natalie, for your time. And thank right you. here at CVS where you can get your flu shot. It's raining. That's strange. Or is everything just stranger when you're at a haunted house? Well, nonetheless, our next haunted location is right there, the New River Inn, when SoFlo Health returns. Here we are at our next haunted location, the New River Inn, and this place is so haunted that it has its own ghost, the conductor. Now, who the conductor was was a train executive that worked for the railroads. This inn housed a lot of people that would work at the train stations, and the railroad is right across the street. Now, the conductor has been reported to be seen here 
pacing nervously. He might even shoot you an angry glare. But I haven't seen anything too crazy, so I'm gonna keep moving. Today, I'm at Broward Health Medical Center to meet with Dr. Dennis Tishko to talk about lung cancer and how Broward Health is making it more accessible to screen, treat, and recover from lung cancer, as you'll see with one of his patients, Mr. Riley. Let's go meet them. What symptoms might someone start to experience if lung cancer is becoming an issue for them? One of the problems with lung cancer, and the reason why it's such a deadly problem, is there are very often no symptoms. Lung cancer is almost always silent until it becomes far too advanced to treat. So it's wow. a particularly deadly kid. So what can people do to detect it early so that they don't have a worse problem? What we're doing is using a high-speed, low-dose CAT scan, a CT scan, mm -hmm. which is remarkably effective at finding these cancers before they have the problems that make them untreatable. So when it comes to the patient, what can they do to better their chances. The first thing a patient can do is recognize whether they should be screened. If you're over age 50 and you've smoked more than 10 or 20 years a pack a day, talk to your doctor about screening. And screening is the best way to find this. And then if somebody does find that they have lung cancer, what does treatment look like? There are a lot of factors to consider. If we can catch it early, that means it's small. If it's small, that means it can generally come out. And if it's removed completely, the patient is cured. Many people think lung cancer is a death sentence, and it is a deadly disease. It's one of the deadliest cancers. But caught early, it can be curable. And that's an important thing for people to keep in mind. Get yourself screened early. That's really what saved my life, is to, uh, they caught the cancer while I was still small and uh, Dr. Tishko went in and removed it without any difficulty, got all of it, since it wasn't a large tumor at all. Catching it early is the key. I feel great, full of pep, and couldn't wait to get back here to the gym. That's really what keeps me alive, it keeps my heart pumping real well. I would say within two to three weeks, I was pretty much back to 90%. How are you making a difference in lung cancer here at Broward Health? What makes Broward Health different? We have a multidisciplinary cancer center, which allows radiologists, surgeons, oncologists, social service to be involved in the care of these patients immediately, and that makes a huge difference in terms of the care they get. If we catch a lung cancer early and we can give somebody back their entire life sooner, so much the better. Well, doctor, thank you so much for your time. Certainly. If you need a screening or you know of someone that might need a screening, Broward Health is the place to do it, and hopefully with Dr. Dennis Tishko. Now I'm inside the schoolhouse behind the King Cromartie House. And it says here that this schoolhouse is a replica of the one that sat where King Cromartie House sits today. It's not immune to spiritual shenanigans though. It's said that the sounds of children running, playing, laughing, and singing around and in the back of the house can be heard by the living, particularly on days when schools visit the schoolhouse. I'm back with Jeff Shub, and the last time you saw him, we were at Sacred Space, and we were walking barefoot. But some people aren't ready to go barefoot, so we have different shoes. Jeff, what is in front of us? So we have a bunch of different shoes from different companies around the world that make shoes that I call good for human shoes. Good for human, okay. That's and why are, why are they good for human? Well, there's several qualities about them that allow your foot to just be a foot, even though they're being protected. Obviously, if barefoot is 100%, right. then everything starts to sort of become a percentage below that. Okay. And if you can get as close to a natural function, right. then that's, that's great. The first thing that uh, you wanna look at is the sole of the shoe. So you wanna make sure that it's really flat and really flexible, right? right, right. Your foot has a ton of joints, a ton of bones. Mm -hmm. That means that it's meant to move. The fact that it's flexible allows your foot to just act like your foot and allows the muscles in your foot to strengthen right. in order to carry you through your life to right. be the foundation of your Most body. Most people think of a comfortable shoe or a shoe that's going to help them, they think of thick soles and they think of, of squishy. Right. right. But that's not what you want. Yeah, so your foot is actually a really powerful sensor. It has a lot of nerves and it helps to feel the ground, the vibration, the temperature, all of those things. And when you're in a really cushioned pair of shoes, you don't feel that at all. All of that energy that you're putting through your entire body from hitting the ground hard really affects all the joints upstream. So you talk about back pain, hip pain, knee pain, that is a factor in all right. of that. So the sole is really important. Right? So what about 
these shoes. I call them toe shoes and I think a lot of people have seen them and they probably get a bad rap because they look different. You know, if barefoot is 100%, mm -hmm. this is like 95%. Really? Right? If you were going to put something on your hand to protect your hands, you wouldn't do this, right? You wouldn't put it into something right. that's just going to block it because what you're going to end up doing is you're going to end up immobilizing it. I actually don't recommend these shoes for starters because you have to have really good control of each individual toe and at the end of the day, it's just about being really conscious and mindful about your transition process, so transitioning to a barefoot style. You're not going to start running the first day you start wearing minimalist barefoot functional shoes. Right. You're going to work your way slowly. You're going to learn how to walk first, right, before you run. Jeff, thank you very much. It's great. Appreciate thank it. You. Dr. Daniel Cariega. I'm a double board certified plastic surgeon practicing in Coral Gables, Florida. You want to make sure that your surgeon is certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery, which is the only certifying board that certifies cosmetic plastic surgeons. So there are a lot of people that call themselves cosmetic surgeons. Um, there is absolutely no credentialing for that. There is no board certification for that. I'm Dr. Paul Durand. I'm a plastic and reconstructive surgeon with Kiriaga Plastic Surgery in Coral Gables. Consultation is probably the most important part of the patient-doctor relationship for any procedure. Before and after photos are key. Every patient is different. Uh, and it's important that you look at before and after pictures of people that look like you as a patient. One of the requests that I get a lot of times from patients is, well, I, I think I'd feel more comfortable having my surgery in a hospital because it's safer. Outpatient surgery is as safe as hospital-based surgery when you are choosing the right operation, the right facility, and the right patient. That's it for this week's episode of SoFlow Health. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you to the Fort Lauderdale Historical Society for allowing us to explore the King Cromartie House, the New River Inn, and the 1899 Schoolhouse. As always, you can watch previous episodes of SoFlow Health on SoFlowHealth.com and share with us what you're doing to stay healthy using at SoFlow Health on social media. Now, we didn't see any ghosts while we were here today, but we had a great time. You should check it out for yourself. I'll see you next week. All right, sorry late guys, traffic on 95 was terrible and... Oh man, it's over? Man. SoFlow Health returns in two weeks, Sunday, November 10th, with a show packed full of health. We'll go for an exciting tour of Calle Ocho in Little Havana, learn whether or not intermittent fasting is worth it, teach you some solutions for tech neck, and even give you some healthy holiday cocktail recipes. That's all Sunday, November 10th, same time, same channel, new episode. I'll see you then.